From the heart of Yerevan, this is Civil Net's Daily News Digest. I'm Maria Titizian, and here are the top stories for Tuesday, March 4. The newly set up Parliamentary Committee for Natural Gas Issues holds its first meeting. Also, Armenia's Health Ministry has stressed the importance of importing pneumococcal vaccines to the country. Plus, crowd mapping Syrian Armenian businesses in Yerevan. And later, Hidden Yerevan takes us to the house of the Cyclops, the Crow, and Modigliani. Last week, the ruling coalition in the National Assembly had proposed setting up an ad hoc committee to look into the controversial natural gas agreements with Russia after it had shot down a similar proposal by the opposition a few weeks earlier. Nonetheless, the proposal was ratified by Parliament and yesterday, the new Committee on Gas Issues held its first meeting. The committee is comprised of four members from the ruling Republican Party of Armenia, one member from the junior coalition partner Rule of Law, two members from the Prosperous Armenia Party and one each from the three opposition parties, the ARF, the ANC and Heritage. We will be bringing you more information about the activities of this committee as they become known to us. Armenia's Minister of Education, Armin Ashotian, is in nagorno karabakh on a two-day working visit. Ashotian is scheduled to meet with the Republic's leadership and attend parliamentary hearings devoted to high schools. He will also visit the Artsakh State University to have meetings with students and faculty. The Ministries of Education of Armenia and Artsakh are expected to sign a cooperation agreement. Armenia's health ministry has stressed the importance of importing pneumococcal vaccines to the country. Head of the National Immune Prevention Program, Gaines Sahagyan, noted that of the 8.8 .8 million child mortality cases recorded since 2008, 476,000 were caused by pneumococcal infections. Pneumococcal vaccines have proven their effectiveness in many countries worldwide. They were introduced in the US in 2000 and in the UK in 2006. No general statistics on pneumococcal diseases such as pneumonia, meningitis, bacteremia, sinusitis, bronchitis is available in Armenia due to difficulties in laboratory diagnostic procedures. Only three clinics managed to bridge that gap in 2012 thanks to the World Health Organization that helped introduce a special surveillance system designed to monitor bacterial meningitis. Armenia's health authorities are planning to introduce the vaccine in September of this year. Monitoring activities and training for personnel about patient clinics will be conducted from June to September. Special attention will also be paid to raising awareness activities among the population. Minister Terenik Dumanyan has said that the lowest child mortality rate recorded in Armenia was in 2013 due to an increase in vaccinations and screening programs as well as the opening of intensive care departments in several children's hospitals. The representation of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Armenia, or UNHCR, in cooperation with Caritas Armenia, organized an open-air concert for the Syrian-Armenian community living at the Catholic Church of Armenia on the occasion of the spring holiday Baragendan. Singer Zari Babayan and the Sophie Devoyan Dance and Soul Studio performed for the children. The event aimed at inspiring displaced Syrian families to start a new life in the homeland. In her opening remarks, UNHCR officer in charge, Kate Pooler, noted that spring is the symbol of new life and hope for a better future. She said, quote, I am glad to be in this warm atmosphere today. I am confident that with our joint efforts, we will be able to help you rebuild your lives and achieve success. In his welcoming remarks, Raphael Archbishop Minasian thanked the UNHCR for organizing the event and noted that the sadness he would always notice in the eyes of Syrian Armenians had vanished. He said, This kind of event gives courage and belief to our compatriots, the Syrian Armenians who have gone through so many hardships. They have found a safe haven in their land of ancestors, Armenia. Next time you visit Armenia, or if you already live here and want to know where the new Syrian restaurants are, you can go to a website where all Syrian establishments are crowd mapped. According to the Ministry of Diaspora, since the start of the civil war in Syria, about 10,000 Syrian Armenians have fled to Armenia. To support them in rebuilding their lives, web developers have created a website that maps locations of newly established Syrian Armenian businesses. You can check it out by following the link on your screen. 
Samil Mardirosyan, an IT specialist and security analyst, has created an Armenian media search engine based on a Google custom search that searches only Armenian media websites and can be also used in Armenian. According to Mardirosyan, searching for Armenian news on the internet has always been a problem because of the absence of news search engines in the Armenian language. According to Mardirosyan, because of this, most Armenians rely on Facebook to get their news, which isn't always the best way, because Facebook has a special algorithm and shows only specific individuals and not always related content for users. He said, so I decided to fill the gap. The 15th European Individual Chess Championships kicked off in Yerevan on Sunday. The opening ceremonies took place in the State Ballet and Opera Theatre with the presence of President Serge Sarkisian and other high-ranking officials. The championship is dedicated to Grand Master and World Champion Dikran Bedrosyan, who would have turned 85 this year. The championship is an 11-round Swiss system in accordance with the European Chess Union tournament rules. Over 260 chess players from 27 countries are participating, including 130 grandmasters. And also in chess news, the World Chess Federation awarded young chess champion Aram Hagopian, who is the world under 12 chess champion of the world, with the title of World Chess Federation Master. Hagopian won the title during the World Championship Tournament in the United Arab Emirates. The Children of Armenia Fund is marking a decade of work in the villages of Armenia. The organization has funded and implemented education, health, social and economic programs that were based on a simple premise. Design a development model for rural communities that would be sustainable and offer opportunities for growth and progress. Founder and Chairman Dr. Garo Armen and Ambassador John Evans spoke to CivilNet about past accomplishments and the plan to expand their vision. Take a look. I started the organization. Uh, my friends were asking me, do we need yet another Armenian organization because we had so many of them. And I think the inspiration was strictly based on need. There was a need in rural parts of Armenia. And at the time, it appeared like no one was taking charge of it in its entirety. I mean, there were a lot of, there were a lot of good organizations that were doing pieces of things. To watch the full interview, you can click on the link on your screen. In a suburb of Yerevan, there is a humble house inhabited by a family of artists. For this week's episode of Hidden Yerevan, we present the work of two brothers, Musher and Simon Bedrosyan, both sculptors. Take a look. To watch the full program, you can follow the link on your screen. The exchange rate is up on your screen as we take a look at your forecast. It's going to be a cloudy day in Yerevan with a high of 12 and a low of 1. Gimri will have a high of 4 and a low of minus 4. Stepanagert will be partly cloudy with a high of 16 and a low of 5. And our travel forecast takes us to the city of Tabriz, Iran, where the high will be 13 and the low a 3. The city of Tabriz has an incredibly long history. Some archaeologists have even proposed Tabriz as the location of the biblical Garden of Eden. The city was first mentioned by the Assyrian king Sargon II in 714 BC and was named Taurus. Over the years, Tabriz became a metropolitan city and even briefly became the capital of the Kingdom of Armenia in the 3rd century AD. The city served as the capital of the Persian Empire many times, the last ruling dynasty being the Qajars. During the late Middle Ages, the city fell under the rule of various Turkic dynasties and kingdoms. Armenians in particular were incredibly instrumental in the city's development. Since the Middle Ages, Armenians served as merchants and artisans in Tabriz. Centuries-old Armenian churches can be found in many of the ancient Armenian villages that are located near the city of Tabriz. Some of those churches are currently listed as UNESCO sites. Those include the Monastery of St. Tarius, St. Stepanos and the Chapel of Zorzor. In the 19th century, Armenians' prominence and reputation in Tabriz grew further as the city became more and more cosmopolitan. Being located on the crossroads of Europe and Asia, Armenians became instrumental in the city's commercial, political and social landscape, even though they were a minority. It is said that they were able to communicate with European merchants because of their Christian heritage. In the early 20th century, Yeprem Khan, one of the leaders of the Constitutional Revolution of Iran, established a branch of the ARF in Tabriz and Rasht. 
This was done to combat Ottoman interests as Turkish genocidal policies had reached the Urmia region nearby, annihilating a sizable number of Armenians and Assyrians. Up until recently, a large number of Armenians resided in Tabriz, having many schools, churches and businesses, despite living amongst Azerbaijanis and Persians. Armenians were respected by Muslim inhabitants and Armenians similarly respected their Muslim neighbors. Unfortunately, over the years, the Armenian community in Tabriz has dramatically decreased. And that is our digest for this Tuesday, March 4. We'd love to hear from you, so you can write to us at english at civilnet.am. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We leave you today with Sima Bina performing Zolfai Yarom. Enjoy, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, God,